Hi, welcome to my talk about neural differential equations. I'm Stefan Sam from Munich, and I'm so happy to be part of this year's ConferConf Oslo. I'm the founder of Jolene IO IT Consultancy and worked before and still as a full stack data science consultant. My focus on applied stochastics and uncertainty handling, that's where I came from, from academia, but during the years got into big data, high performance computing and real-time processing. And in general, my job is to make things production ready. Julien I.O. I'm based in Munich, but working for whole Europe and hence we are also here at ConferConf. We focus on Julia consulting, high performance computing, machine learning, data processing, so the whole sphere and we build end-to-end -end solutions, including data architectures, machine learning operations, DevOps, GDPR, user interfaces, and everything, which is around bringing a um, machine learning solution to production. We have 10 more, more years experience in data science, five more year and more years in IT consulting, and also working with Julia, we have more than five years experience. We already have a network, young company, but already there. Reach out if you're interested. The outline for my talk today, um, we are going to start with the Julia introduction. And then I'm showing you how you can use differential equations within a neural network within Julia. And the second, we do the reverse thing. We have a neural net within a differential equation. So this is actually, I think, the, the part where you could say this is a neural differential equation. We're also going to look into uncertainty learning, so Bayesian estimation of such neural differential equations, um, a short remark on symbolic regression, and finally, some benchmarks. Okay, let's jump into it. Julia was developed and incubated at the MIT. It just had its 10th anniversary. And then since 2018, it's version 1.0, so stable and production ready. You have to think about Julia as a generic programming language. We're going to see it in a second, but with a strong focus on applied mathematics. You have all the syntax support you want if you use math. Yeah, and you can plug and play it for Python, R, Fortran, or MATLAB. These are kind of the standard alternatives. To emphasize three most important things, first, Julia is fast. So it's as fast as C or Rust, and compared to Python, you get speed ups from 30 times to 300 times. The, the second biggest thing is that in Julia, because of these, this speed and still being dynamic as Python, you can do everything in one language. So you don't need to switch, you have Python as the front end and C as the back end. Now in Julia, everything is Julia. And the third big thing, and we're going to look at this in a second, um, multi-methods. So yeah, in Python or other languages, you use inheritance for code reuse and composability. But in Julia, we have multi-methods, which are far more intuitive. And yeah, I'm going to present them in a second. Where is Julia used in production? So main fields are pharma, industry, energy, finance, banking, medicine, and biotechnology. Then in principle, it's a generic language. You can use it everywhere, but these are kind of fields where you use a lot of math. Of course, also academia is very, very much suited for, for using Julia. And yeah, so fields are modeling, simulation. These are the strongest optimization and planning uh, same was very, very widespread in the Julia ecosystem. We have also data science, high performance computing, big data real time. These are kind of some fields. Okay, let's jump into some Julia code. Okay, so here I prepared a little example of cats and dogs, um, which should give you an intuition how you can program in Julia. So every function in Julia is its own interface. These are multi methods. It's really totally simple. So we start here with defining on two data types a cat, which has a name and a description, and a dog, which just has a name, 
and we instantiate a couple of these by just yeah, calling them as functions. So we have a kitty, we have a tiger, a bellow, and a charlie. Then we define a little function. You see it's really very, very condensed syntax. And yeah, so we have a little story which gets two animals in, then describes the first, describes the second, and let the two animals meet. And we also define these functions with generic implementations. So a little description of an animal and we also let two animals meet. So you see the syntax is very, very concise and most importantly, like you are used to it in Python, you can write generic functions. You know, don't need to put any types in there, but yeah, they work. But if you want to put types into it, you can. And this is the multi-method part. You can specialize every method for every type you, you have. And here now we specialize for cats and a cat dog combination. So we have a little special description of our cat, which uses the cat dot description field. And yeah, and if we meet a cat and a dog, then we also put a, a special string there. And yeah, and this works for arbitrary many arguments. Yeah, and also for functions and types in different packages. So it's really an interface and you can use it to structure your code, structure your packages, your application. Very intuitive, very easy and yeah, brings also the benefits of um, accelerating your code. So then we run my little story for our pairs and you're invited to try it out at home. <laughs> Just download Julia for you and type in these little examples and you're going to see it does what it should. Yeah? The intuitive meaning is captured here. So kitty and tiger um, are described as cats and meet with the standard default case. Bello and Charlie are described with the default function and are meeting with the default function. And meeting, letting tiger and Charlie meet gives us a, a description of the cat, which really is the special case, a description of the dog, which is the generic case, and our special meet um, function will be called if they are met. Okay, nice. Um, I also want to give you a short overview of the two, two other main parts, and that's, that's faster and it's 100% Julia. And here, just a little example from the Mandelbrot example, you see the picture. So there are two um, implementations the one from Python and the one from Julia. Check it out at home. Um, you see they're easy to read. Yeah, The Python one uses a bit of Python and a bit of NumPy combination and the Julia one uses pure Julia. And the performance benefit is about a factor of 30. And yeah, very importantly, I want to emphasize that in Python, if you want to improve performance, you generally have to look for packages which are written in C, like NumPy or Numbar. And then you use these packages as good as you can, Yeah, these sub-APIs, and you can improve your performance. That's pretty cumbersome. In Julia, the world is so much easier. You just can use Julia. And the better you use Julia, the better you'll use what you've learned at university, like yeah, better structure your algorithm, the better your algorithm will be. So that's really nice part, better performance and Julia is really the better usage of Julia itself. Okay, so now let's jump to differential equations. So first part is um, that we want to get a differential equation within a neural network. As an example, we take the logical Volterra equation. And yeah, maybe you've heard this before. If not, it's really super simple. This is common example in differential equations it, and it models the population of rabbits and wolves of prey and predators and you see it here in the plot so the blue ones are the rabbits they're always a bit more and the red ones are the, the wolves and yeah the more rabbits there are the more wolves there can be but then the wolves eat the rabbits so the rabbits get down and you get this cyclic behavior. These are the formulas and yeah, in Julia 
we can model this directly using the differential equations package. And this is the, um, you see it here on the left, this is the function you would implement. So you get um, the, the u itself describing the system and du describing the derivative of the system. So the derivative we, we need to implement and here we, we do it by assigning it to the du parameter which we get. So we use mutation for speeding up things. And then we give the initial condition, the time span, the initial um, parameters and yeah, and we have our ODE, our ordinary differential equation problem. We can plot this and get the plot above. So now we want to put this into a neural differential a neural network. And in Julia, there's a well-known framework for this called flux.jl. And all we need is a loss function. You probably know this if you have worked with neural networks. Um, yeah, you optimize the loss function. And here we just use our solve or the solve function to solve our problem. Um, yeah, so we import flux and differential equation flux. This is kind of a, the bridge between it. We get our initial parameters and mark these as the parameters for our flux framework. So then we get our a predict function which solves our differential equations and saves um, our times at um, 0 0.1 time points. And our final loss is going to sum of all of these, um, taking the difference to one. So this is just for example purposes. We will, uh, here we try to get our rabbits constant, so constant number of rabbits. And this is why here we are comparing it to one and sum the absolute differences. And then we can train it. So Putting it into flux train, we just need some pseudo data. Uh, in this case, we just repeat an empty tuple and we get our optimizer. That's we use Adam here. Put everything into the flux train function and we get the result. And yeah, so here a little simulation. So the, the code is run and you see that it gets adapted and flattened down. It really tries to bring the number of rabbits to one. Yeah, and this part here, which I just skipped, is that you uh, can also put this now intuitively into a larger network. So that was our final goal. goal. We want to have this differential equations layer within our neural network. And in Flux, we have this chain command where we have now a dense layer first, then we put our ODE layer, then another dense layer, and finally softmax, and you can combine this as you want. So this is super straightforward. Okay, next part is to have it the other way around. So now we want to have the neural net within our differential equations. So in this sense, we want to model our derivative with a neural network. There's another example here. So <clears throat> you see the plot, um, the derivative is now a matrix times the cubic value. And the, the blue one is here, the thing which we want to model. And the red one will is going to be the initial um, output of our network. So we want to model our derivative with the neural network. And in this case, now we use a multi-layer perceptron with one hidden layer and uh, time and hyperbolicus activation function. So you see we again take flux and diff equation flux as the packages. We combine our little neural network. We simplify it by already um, putting in the, the cubic value. It makes things simpler if we know this in advance. And then we have a neural ordinary differential equations helper function. So this does all the heavy lifting for us and we can directly use it. The flux params gets all the implicit parameters for us. And if we call our neural ODE, we get actually the prediction. And this initial prediction you see on the top here. So this is uh, the plot command so that you can repeat it at home. And training is totally similar. 
we again get our pseudo data and our optimizer and train it. So you see it here, um, the, the algorithm then is going to fit the, the neural network to, to the data and you see very nicely the uh, cubic functionality here which is going to be fit to the given data. There's a second way to understand and think of neural networks as part of differential equations. And this one is taken now from the very, very common, very, very known paper, Neural Ordinary Differential Equations. You can think about this as a general generalization from residual networks. So here you see on the left the two different formulas. So in the residual network, we just have layer after layer, where the next layer is just capturing a difference from the layer before. So we have the previous layer, HT, and we add our neural network just uh, computes the difference from these network with some extra parameters. So this will then be our the output for the next layer. And we also see it here on the right in this lovely picture. So we start with the first layer, we add one layer and add differences always on top of it. And the newer differential equations um, yeah, network, you we do this continuously. So where we had a discrete before, we now take the derivative or we model the derivative. And this looks, or you can imagine this like this picture on the right, where we now have continuous space and we don't need to take these time steps as defined by the layers, but we can use advanced ordinary differential equation solvers which take these time steps optimally depending on the landscape. So this gives a lot of advantages and check out the paper um, to also see a couple of more. But this is a nice intuition, so having a neural network within a differential equation is not just a powerful way to learn things, but you cannot think of this as a generalization to these residual networks. Okay, nice. So going on, um, there's a little bit more in the Julia ecosystem. And here now we want to combine these with Bayesian estimation. So having neural networks is nice, but you always get point estimates. So we're just learning one solution and you are not sure whether this solution is actually enough. Yeah, so whether this actually learned well, uh, maybe it just learned random stuff yeah, and you can't trust it really. And this uncertainty problem, you can really nicely capture by some Bayesian approach. So there are some packages readily available in the Julia ecosystem, and this is now using Turing. Um, but first, let's start with a little, a little bit more difficult um, data set. So we use again the Slotka, um, the, the rabbit and wolves example, the predator prey um, example, but now we add some random noise on top of it. So you see the picture, it's really kind of the same data, but just with a Gaussian noise added on top. And in addition, we just use the predator data, so the red one, the wolves, and don't use the rabbit data to make it a bit more realistic. And yeah, and we can model this with a Turing package, Turing.jl. And you see that we, we have a kind of a nice fit function where we use the special tilde operator, which is only available if you have this model in front. So we have our parameters, um, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. These are our standard parameters for our problem. We actually reuse the very same problem here. Yeah, we can solve it and now input our probabilistic parameters. So it's really the same stuff just put into another probabilistic framework. And in addition, we add some random noise on top of it, some Gaussian normal distributed noise. So the predicted value, the predicted predator's value, um, yeah, we are going to have a bit more noisy. So then we fit this model and this is our description of the data. And then we can solve this and in the Bayesian setting, solving often means sampling. 
And here we use the, the famous nuts sampler to sample three chains and then we do some sampling from them. You don't need to understand the details, I've written a thesis about this. And yeah, so we plot this and now let's take a look at the picture, it's much easier to understand. So here we have pl plotted a couple of random samples from what we've learned. And what you see nicely is that the model learned much, much more tight bounds on the Wolf's data. So you see the same random data plotted here and the gray, the gray lines are the random samples. And for the rabbits, the blue data, you see that there's much more randomness involved and the model, yeah, naturally was not able to pin it down precisely because it was only given the Wolf's data. And you see it so, so nicely that, okay, the wolves, they are pretty well modeled, but the rabbits not. Um, yeah, and you can put this also in more complex neural differential equation setups and get an estimate how, how big your error is, how well you have trained. So check out these things. They are really impressively powerful. They take a bit more time to compute, but in case this uncertainty matters for you, this is the way to go. Okay, so finally, a note about symbolic regression. There's a package called data-driven differential equations.jl. And yeah, just <laughs> Google it and check it out. There are a couple of methods how you can extract symbolic representations, so human readable formula from the learned neural differential equations. So it's really nice to have these neural differential equations to learn arbitrary relations but you can even get kind of standard symbolic representations out of it. And this package is for it. Check it out. Okay, so then finally, some benchmarks. So we've now seen a lot of things and these benchmarks now compare the, yeah, the core part, which is sometimes called scientific machine learning. And also here has the name universal, differ universal differential equations. We've only looked at the neural ordinary differential equation so far, but in the Julia world, this is really more powerful. And yeah, and the big table here taken from the paper um, shows that yeah, the special advantages of Julia is that it covers also stiff equations, differential algebraic equations, stochastic differential equations, delayed differential equations, and all these um, are kind of almost unique. The, the Torch SDE package from yeah, an extension to PyTorch also covers the stochastic differential equations, but all the others are not covered by any, anything else out there. And an important and very important part is also the stabilized part. Um, this is about taking the derivatives that the Julia ecosystem comes with different ways how to compute the derivative and also stabilized ways. So it happens that the ones used in these other packages, they can actually be far, far off from the solution you want. Because yeah, it doesn't always work the, the way they compute the derivative. And there are a couple of other things, um, most important, where, which are mostly similar among the packages, but important to note also the GPU part in Julia, you have really awesome out-of-the-box GPU support, which is not only for this package, but for generic Julia. So if you go for PyTorch, you have the GPU support, but only as long as you stay within the PyTorch system. And in Julia, the GPU support is generic. Okay, so there's the second um, table from the paper, which is comparing the speed. And here's an example um, where they just have a lot of ordinary differential equations starting small and going to the numbers of almost 1 million ordinary differential equations and comparing the scientific machine learning system in Julia then with the torch differential equations. And yeah, most importantly, um, two things um, to emphasize here. So the scientific machine learning system is really a bunch of different stuff. And yeah, so in case one method doesn't work for your special case, there are other methods which are built to just cover your case. And yeah, and if this is your field, you're very happy to have the full feature set of the scientific machine learning package. 
So this is why there are two lines here, the first one having the optimal choice and the second one always using the algorithm DP5, which is also not so much worse, but still you see that you'd get uh, another benefit if you take the algorithm for you. And from the speed comparison to torch, um, the most important thing is that the smaller your parameter space gets them. So here the, the smaller number of ODEs is, the larger Julia benefits, yeah, the, the, the faster Julia is compared to PyTorch. And yeah, if you get to 1 million, we still have an impressive speed up, but it's less. And this is because um, in this field, the matrix multiplication is the most expensive operation. And this is where the Torch libraries are heavily optimized for. But nevertheless, even here you get benefits and yeah, Next to the speed, of course, also the feature set is very important. And yeah, one note about the stability um, remark from before. So also in this example, the torch differential equations calculation diverges on all but the first two examples. So the larger examples are actually not accurate when using the torch differential equations. So the stability point is also very, very crucial. And at last, um, Comparing the speed, there's also the TensorFlow library, and they report that they are actually very similar to the Torch performance. So Julia is really yeah, um, a factor of 30 or even more better than PyTorch or TensorFlow here. Okay, so let's take a summary. What have we learned today? So first, I introduced to you the Julia language itself. We've seen there are immense speedups. So usually you can expect a speed up of 30 to 300. Then really important, everything is Julia and Julia. So you can hack it. You also have maintenance, simplicity. Everything is understandable for everyone. That's, that's nice. So Julia solved this two language problem. And finally, there are multi methods, also called multiple dispatch, where you can use every function as an interface. This makes for intuitive generic programming. You will love it. Okay, then we looked into differential equations as part of neural networks. So here you have to think of an, for example, ordinary differential equation as part of, as a layer of a neural network. And we haven't noticed this before, but there you've seen this in the benchmark section. This works for ordinary differential equations, stochastic differential equations, delayed differential equations, differential algebraic equations, and partial differential equations. Um, and then we looked into the other way around, so having a neural net which models the derivative itself. And you can think of this as a generalization of residual networks. And again, in the Julia ecosystem, the scientific machine learning ecosystem here, it works with all kinds of support differential equations. Then we looked into the uncertainty learning. So here we use the Turing.jl package and Bayesian estimation. So you can use this to model randomness in general, but especially in this context, you can use it to monitor your training uncertainty. So you can really th see, okay, which parameters I learned well from the data and which not. We've seen this by only training on wolf's data and we've seen that the rabbit's parameters are indeed, yeah, more noisy still. And this also, yeah, this combination works for all differential equation types. So this is really impressive stuff. Finally, we also looked in the symbolic regression very shortly. I just gave you the hint, check it out. It's super powerful as well. And yeah, and at last we looked into some benchmarks. So this scientific machine learning system I presented you as the by far widest range of features and also the highest speed, especially if you have problems with only a few parameters. With that, I want to say thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your interest. I'm very happy to answer all your questions. Please reach out to me um, now on the, in the Slack channel or later stefan.sam at julien.io or at hello.atjulien.io. You're very happy to reach out. And yeah, then I wish you a lovely conference. Bye.